go back through these, brings back lots of memories. They're more than memories for Geneva Watts. Let's see. They're her history. These children are all married now. Tears your hell whole line. Geneva was the cafeteria manager at Pleasant View Elementary for more than 30 years, from the time man first walked on the moon to the new millennium. I knew what the children liked just like I would my family. These hands served a lot of lunches over those years. Everybody knew everybody in the neighborhood. We all felt like family. All that could come to an end. Pleasant View is a one-of-a-kind school in this county. The superintendent recommended that the school be closed down. 56 kids attend classes there. Thursday, there was standing room only as students, parents, and the community pleaded to save their school. They're worried about longer bus rides and its effect on their kids. Financially, I see why they want to do it. But looking at the students, I can't. I'm, I don't want to see that part of it. The school is a piece of history Geneva holds dear, one she is afraid could turn into a memory. Education shouldn't be looked at financially all the way. It should be looked at at the student and what they become. The board is expected to determine the school's fate during a vote on May 12th. In Amherst County, Christian Heilman, WDBJ7. The ATF's National Tracing Center may be an hour and a half from its headquarters in Washington, D.C., but when a gun is used to commit a crime, this is the heart of their effort to find out where it came from. I'm calling with the ATF. Every gun leaves a paper trail. National Tracing Center. And the job here is to find it. We're providing a very important service to the law enforcement community. In the last year, the center traced more than 300,000 firearms. <laughs> very well oiled machine with what we've got. But what you may not realize is that there's no centralized database for them to search. Here they rely heavily on paper records. Uh, there, there simply is no such database. There is no national registry. The seller keeps track of who bought any firearm. I'll need that within 24 hours. So the first line of attack is to call the manufacturer, then wholesaler, then gun store. But often enough, one of them is out of business. If they close, the store has to ship their records to the ATF. Right now, they're getting an all-time high of almost 2 million records per month. A lot of these people have been in business since 1960, 1970, so you're talking 30 or 40 years. Boxes as far as the eye can see. That many records lead to some crowded hallways, with more rolling in every day. Employees organize, clean, and pack them into boxes so they can wait their turn to be scanned. Even when they're digitized, though, they're not searchable. Federal law says the ATF is not allowed to make any sort of database with gun buyers' names. We are going through microfilm and uh, reviewing hundreds of documents. It would take an act of Congress to change that. For now, the ATF stays on the paper trail helping law enforcement find criminals by the guns they use. They don't realize that it's this, this fundamentally manual process to trace a firearm. In Martinsburg, West Virginia, Christian Heilman, WDBJ7. It doesn't take long to see that the congregation at Evergreen United Methodist is close-knit. It's not just people that we just see on Sunday morning. It's people we interconnect with in our lives every day. Gus Paulette grew up sitting in this sanctuary, now under repair after Wednesday's deadly storms. These things you see on TV, these things that you, you see happens in the Midwest, down South. The damage is difficult to imagine, but for Paulette's neighbors, it's a reality. You know where someone's house was at, Margaret Grishaw's house, it's gone. You know, the, the store that Richard Hamilton and his brother built, they're gone. The physical destruction is apparent, but that's not what's taking the largest toll on this group. This is part of life that we don't understand sometimes, why things happen like this. You never know when the last time you're going to see one of your loved ones here on this earth. Ricky Harris's uncle Keith Harris died in the storm. Harris was one of the 40 or so who attended church here. Keith was one of the first ones here every Sunday. He sat right over there. Just a humbling feeling that you know, a storm that only lasts 30 seconds to a minute could do so much damage. The congregation and volunteers cleaned up the grounds and secured the roof before the next rain. Sunday service will be held in the basement, a small piece of normalcy for a community still in shock. This is when we got to put our faith into practice. This is when we've got to move forward and say, okay, everything we read and study on Sundays, we put into place. 
The congregation at Evergreen United Methodist has been holding services here in the basement since the storms first hit. Now, after months, this is the first Sunday they're back in the sanctuary. The front door is finally open for church. Now, this is a very, very, very special day. It's also a return to a decades old routine for Peggy Staples. My husband moved right into his dad's seat, which is this seat right here. We sit here every Sunday. The unspoken assigned pews are back. Since February, the storm stole that comfort. It feels good, feels natural. I feel like I really have come in worship this morning. It seems long ago, but it's not been that long ago. Almost four months later, Gus Paulette's church is back together while the community around them is still damaged. When you come to church every Sunday and you look across the, the landscape of the surroundings and you see this, the, the homes that are gone or the trees are missing, you know, it's not. It, it wakes you up. Reality comes back and said this really happened. Its effects will always be felt here. Keith Harris died in February storm. He was the first to arrive on Sundays and always sat in the back. But that's one thing that will, you know, will not be the same. The congregation still takes comfort in the support from across the state. They keep a list and display of everyone who cared when they needed it most. We focus on the bad so much, but it's been so many people who've reached out to help. It's a new beginning, you know, it's hope for the future. That assistance helping them get to this point of normalcy for a church that has weathered the worst. And every day is a blessing and we just got to take advantage of what's given to us at this moment. In Appomattox County, Christian Heilman, WDBJ7.